Good morning. Welcome to this first weekend of March Madness. It is estimated that over the next two weeks, over $1.7 billion will be lost in productivity across the United States. <laughs> And if last night was any indication, March Madness will rival the beginning of the football season in low church attendance across the country. But we are here to worship and to spend the right amount of time honoring the God that has given us everything. So let's spend just a moment or two quieting our hearts and minds as we get ready to worship the Lord. attention to the projector, please stand and raise your voices in song. This is my story. This is 
penitential order right to begins on page 351 in the Red Book of Common Prayer, page 351. In the center of the page. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. The Decalogue. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Jesus said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The Apostle John wrote, If we say we have no sin, we <coughs> deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The writer to the Hebrews adds, Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Kneeling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's spend a moment or two in reflection and personal confession before we continue with our public corporate confession. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Page 356. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy, mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son Jesus came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives light to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's word. first lesson comes from the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1 through 13. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse in Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I named you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. He, and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look upon his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see more as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. 
He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. And the The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 123. The psalm is found on six, page 612 in the Book of Common Prayer and your online bullet. Let us pray Psalm 23. My whole verse I will begin. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. <clears throat> Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second lesson comes from the letter to the church in Esbias, chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. The reading can be found in our online bulletin for the personal Bible. A reading from Ephesians. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose it. For it is shameful even to mention what people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some were saying, 
it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how are your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go wash in Shiloh, go to Shiloh and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, who is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. And the Pharisees also began to ask how he received his sight. He said to them, he put mud in my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It is your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blinded, and that he received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son, that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for a second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have, already I have told you already, and you would not listen. Do you want to, why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he listens to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I might believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into the world, into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and that those who do see may become blind. 
Some of the Pharisees near him heard this, and they said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have not sinned. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Please pray with and for me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Savior and Redeemer. Father God, may only your words be spoken and your words heard. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Can I get the young ones to come on down? I need to know. Yeah. Yeah. It's 14. Yeah, John, that means you. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. Gentle sirs, how are you doing today? I'm tired and I'm tired. You're tired and you're hurt. How are you doing? You're tired too? How are you doing? You're excited and ready. You're excited, <laughs> excited and ready. Okay. So what are you excited and ready for? Disneyland. Disneyland. And church. <laughs> but not in that order. Right? Right, yeah. Okay, you're excited to be at church, and then after church, we're going to go to Disneyland, right? Okay, that's cool. All right. Um, were you guys listening to anything that was read earlier this morning? Yeah, no. Okay. Are, you were listening? All right, cool. Um, there was a test, there was a story that we read first about how David became king, all right? And the important thing about David becoming king was is that it shows us that God looks at us differently, right? God what sees what's inside each one of you. And that's really good because what God put in each one of you is very special and very important. So what I want you to remember from that story is don't let anyone look at you on the outside and judge you. Look at you on the outside and think that they know everything about you. And then try to tell you that you can't do something. That you can't be something. That you aren't something. I want you to remember that God knows you in here. Right? And what he put here is so special that he loves you. And that what God calls you to do and God calls you to be, you can absolutely do it and you can absolutely be it because he's the one that made you. All right? So, no matter if you are young, old, or older, <laughs> no matter if you have no hair or curly hair, or dark hair, light, light. or light hair, right? It doesn't matter. God loves you, he cares for you, and he sees you. All right? So, remember that this time going forward. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you called each and every one of us. And that in calling us, it's because you know us, you love us, and you have a fabulous plan for us. And Lord, we would pray that you would protect us from those who would say, you cannot. Because with God's help, for those who believe him and love him, yes, we can. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, I believe God gave you the strength, no matter how tired you are, to get me up <laughs> off the floor. Okay? okay? Together. One, two, three, four. Come on, come on, come on. All right. John, I know you weren't helping. John, get with your brother. Okay. You weren't helping, I could tell. One, two, three, four. Come on. Ah. Oh.
Thank you, thank you. Did you chin yourself? Can I pray for your chin? No, 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 it's fine. Okay. <laughs>
taking that, when I read it, first read it, it put me into a place and a space of peace and calm and tranquility and told me to slow down. If the Lord is our pace setter, if we try to move at the speed of God, we will consider doing things slightly different than what the world would have us do each and every day. Is it not more often our pray, prayer, Lord, hurry up, get this done, answer my prayer right now, than, Lord, in your time, in your, at your pace, with your peace. When we rush through the day, do we not get less accomplished than if we had taken our time and allowed the day to unfold as God has intended the day to unfold? Are we not further behind? The, the harder I rush, the behinder I get. Any of you ever thought that? You rush, 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 rush like you've got so much to do, and at the end of the day, you look back at what you've gotten done, and you haven't gotten a third of the things done that you wanted to do, as if you had just stopped. Allow the Lord's peace to come over you. Allow the Lord to order your day so that you can get done the things that God wanted you to get done, and be released of the things that really weren't all that important. But we, on the other hand, we're trying to get so much done that we're trying to trick God into giving us more hours in the day with this foolishness called daylight saving time. <laughs> or we take an hour off the beginning of the day, add it to the end of the day, and somehow think we've got more time. When the reality is, guess what? We still have the same perfect 24 hours that have existed since the beginning of time to get the work done that we needed to get done. Anybody see the ridiculousness of this statement? Well, what we need to do is just slow down. When I came back from sabbatical, I told the congregation one of the things that I had learned when I was up and spending time at St. Gregory's Abbey in Three Rivers, Michigan, was the pace that the monks were on that I tried to live into and walk in for a total of 10 days. These brothers move really slow. They read really slow. They worship really slow. Their responses are measured in God's time. And yet, in the course of one week, going through the seven hours of a day, as we prayed and met for worship seven hours, starting at 4 a.m. and finishing at 7.45 p.m. Seven days a week. In one week, they read through all 151 songs, including that monster, 119. We read and responded to every verse because they had measured their time as God measures time, slowly and at his pace. I would present to you, my brothers and sisters, that if we just slowed down a bit and did not rush from point A to point B to point C to point Z, 
we would see more of what God wants us to see. We would hear more of what God wants us to hear. We would feel more of God's presence in us if we weren't right trying to rush through. Now, I know there is going in the back of some of y'all's mind, oh my God, that means this service is never going to end. <laughs> there was once a point in time when we could count on the services from beginning to end would be exactly one hour. That would include absolutely everything that we would do. We would come, we would sing, we would worship, we'd have communion, we would say hi to everybody, and then we'd be gone and get ready for the rest of our day and do all the other things that we're supposed to be doing on that Sunday. Amen? It's doable. <laughs> it is absolutely doable. It is absolutely doable. But I would present to you, my brothers and sisters, that even with a shorter sermon, even with no songs, we're still rushing because this is not important enough to spend the time in here that God wants us to spend. <laughs> <laughs> so I would ask you, my brothers and sisters, to slow down. I would ask you, particularly in this season of Lent, which we are almost through, because we've been rushing because we need to get to Easter. We need to get to Holy Week. We need to get to Good Friday. We need to get to Easter so we can say the A word again. <laughs> right? So that we can quit eating fish seven days a week and get back to eating red meat so that we can take back all the things that we gave up for Lent. I would say that if we just slow down in our present in this time and space, that it would serve us a little better and in turn serving God a little bit more efficiently. And I pray that we do that in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
for Daniel and Scott, the priests, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, please add your own intercessions, either silently or aloud. Continued healing for Magdalene. Heavenly Father, I pray that Daniel and I would be able to slow down and enjoy this time that we have with our grandson. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for those in the military, law enforcement, first responders, healthcare professionals, educators, students. This congregation. you, O God, our King, we pray, for we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Please name before God those who have died. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, the peace and grace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you.
Nope. Um, I would ask for your prayers as Jane and I and our youngest grandson go on the last of our grandchildren's outings to Disneyland. Each on the eighth year of each of our grandkids, we've taken them to Disneyland. Uh, and Austin, our youngest, this is his trip. And of course, Murphy's Law demands that we are in the middle of yet another atmospheric river. And so there's rain planned for Disneyland today, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And Thursday, it's supposed to be perfect. So, but we're going to go and we're going to enjoy ourselves anyway. Isn't that right? Yes, we are. Bring the rain or shine. The rain or shine will bring our poncho. So keep uh, keep us in your prayers. Um, if you have any uh, particular pastoral emergencies, contact Lorenzo, and Lorenzo will put you in touch with you know, those who have been assigned to help cover. Uh, but the Lord's got all of this. Any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Please take a look in the parish hall for uh, the progress on the new lighting and the new ceiling that have uh, been put up in the parish hall, and particularly for the uh, stained window that has been framed up against the far wall. Uh, if the battery still holds, it's really well done. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
service continues on page 340, page 340 in the Book of Common Prayer. Thank 
grace and heavenly benediction. But also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him. That he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Ghost. All honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On page 337. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord. Trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property it is to always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him.